If you're struggling to gain positive momentum in these first few days and weeks and months of the fresh new year, one reason might be that you're still surrounding yourself with outdated identity clutter that's hindering you from updating your self-concept according to your new vision. Hi there, I'm Annie Katronamas and I'm occasionally awake. I'm here to help you inspire your awakenings, heal yourself and reawaken your life. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today let's talk about how to let go of identity clutter in order to start the new year with a clean slate. I'm going to talk about the three-step process that can help you let go of identity clutter and identify that clutter in the first place in order to start the new year fresh. So to start with, let's talk about what identity clutter actually is. So there are two different types of identity clutter, mental identity clutter and physical identity clutter. Here's what you need to know about them. Mental identity clutter relates to outdated thought patterns and mindsets that don't serve us anymore. This type of clutter tells us old stories about ourselves that do not contribute to the person we are today, let alone to the person we want to become. And not only is it not contributing, identity clutter can even hinder us from moving forward because it keeps parts of our identity configuration situated in the past. Here are a few examples for mental identity clutter. Number one, you failed an exam at university. Three past exams later, you're still identifying with the student who failed that one exam. You still feel like a failure and like a student barely getting by. Example number two, you've never identified as fit or sporty and struggled your way through school sports. Today, you've been practicing yoga for a year or you've picked up running or dancing or any other sport a year ago, but you're struggling to stay consistent with your practice because you are still identifying with the old story of never having been good at sports anyway. And here's a third example. You've been in and out of many relationships. Now you're in a new relationship that feels so different and so much better than the ones you've been in before and you resonate with the person so much and you really want to make this work this time. However, you're still identifying with being someone who is hard to keep, easily bored, doesn't want to settle down, wants to be independent, so you start repeating the old patterns again. What these examples all have in common is that the old story we keep telling ourselves is affecting our thoughts and our behavior in the present in a way that keeps us stuck in our old ways and hinders us from moving forward and beyond those old patterns. Even if the potential and some evidence for a new and updated identity story is already there. Honestly, I'm so glad you're here right now. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe to become occasionally awake with me. So this was mental identity clutter. On the other hand, there's physical identity clutter. Physical identity clutter comes in the form of objects and things that we associate meaning and memories with. It's objects that we still surround ourselves with, that we keep in our space, on our walls, on our shelves, in our drawers, because they've served us well at a certain point in the past. However, we might keep these things well beyond their mental expiration date. Here are some examples for physical identity clutter. Physical identity clutter might come in the form of framed pictures on the wall of people that you do not necessarily want to be reminded of on a daily basis anymore. Physical identity clutter might look like all the notes you ever took at university two or 20 years ago when you were still a student. The yoga mat or sports equipment you used excessively on a daily basis in another phase of your life that's now passed and you haven't been using that mat or that equipment in a year. Physical identity clutter might also look like the novel you started reading three times before losing interest, but you do not want to give it away because you identify as an avid reader and you want to finish that book because you finish all books. 
but you don't actually want to finish this one. So it stays on the shelf for ever, unless you make a decision about it. And here's the thing, what might look less fatal or dramatic than mental identity clutter is really just part of the story. Physical clutter represents visual cues for an old story we keep telling ourselves. In other words, physical identity clutter is an extension of mental identity clutter. You might be experiencing a sort of vicious cycle dynamic between physical identity clutter and mental identity clutter. Objects and things can often be a physical reminder that then triggers the old mental identity story to be repeated over and over. Not even seeing something regularly, but just knowing that it's hidden somewhere, that it's somewhere in your space, can be enough to perpetuate mental identity clutter. Mental identity clutter stays real and substantial as long as there are physical objects surrounding us telling that story. So now we've talked about the two types of identity clutter, mental and physical identity clutter, and how they contribute to reconstructing and recreating our old identity configuration, our old self-concept, our old ways and patterns in the present. Which is why identity clutter can be one of the reasons we might struggle to move forward in life. Now let's look at a three-step process that can help you make a final decision about your very personal identity clutter. The three steps are identifying our clutter, evaluating our clutter, and making a final decision about the identity clutter. Let's start with step number one, identifying the identity clutter in the first place. Ask yourself these questions. Which old mindsets am I still clinging on to that do not serve me anymore? And which objects are hidden in my space that no longer represent my current preferences, values, desires, and goals? Step number two is to evaluate the mental and or physical identity clutter that you've identified. Ask yourself into which past outdated life phase does this thought or thing belong? How does this identity clutter make me feel and act today? And how do these feelings and actions affect the path I'm walking towards the life I want to create for myself? Step number three, make a decision about your identity clutter. So, do you want to keep it or toss it? Probably you want to toss it, but you struggle because you also kind of want to keep it, right? Does this sound familiar? If it does, you can be pretty sure that you identified your identity clutter correctly. Congratulations. What are you supposed to do now? Please note that there is no right or wrong answer to this. The main point here is to become aware of our identity clutter and its implications for our story and life experience because it's only when we really become aware of identity clutter in the first place that we can make a conscious and informed decision about it. That decision can be to sell, to donate, or to throw away the object, or to replace the negative old thought pattern with a more deliberate and positive thought. That decision could also be to relocate an object or to postpone letting it go. That decision could be to consciously keep part of our mental identity clutter as we learn to acknowledge the ongoing need we might have for it and learn to appreciate how the old story is still serving us after all. Please know that any decision you make about your identity clutter is a step forward in the right direction. If you really want to release that identity clutter but you struggle to do so, you might still be lacking some clarity regarding your vision and intention moving forward. You might need to become more precise about where you want to go next so you can make a conscious decision about what not to pack to get there. So this was my take on identifying and letting go of identity clutter in order to start this new year with a clean slate. I really hope it helps. Got any occasional awakenings yet? Because now I'd like to hear from you. So tell me, what's some identity clutter you're trying to let go of? And which part of the three-step process is most helpful for you?
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And if you want more insights on the four types of awakening and how to experience them in your life occasionally, visit me at occasionallyawake.com to inspire your awakenings. Bye.